The Top Knot Creative Show, The Top Knot Creative Show, seeking super smart, super talented superheroes, how to be wow over the world and all around, The Top Knot Creative Show, The Top Knot Creative Show. Hello everyone, this is Shante Schrader and welcome to the show where we seek out the super smart, super talented, and basically the superheroes who are taking over the world and making it super well. And I am really excited to have our guest on today, Regina Busset. She is the founder and owner of Backpacks Wanted. We're going to learn what that is, but let me tell you a few details about this wild woman. Uh, she has celebrated 29 glorious years on this earth, um, if this is still new, and then the second... This has been the second year of her website, Backpackers Wanted, and she travels uh, around the world and she has had amazing adventures. She writes travel articles for a handful of magazines, along with competing for the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom Next Wild Guide competition, and that is a Wild Kingdoms TV series, which we're all familiar with, and it has amazed the views for over 50 years. Um, Her efforts are to motivate even one wishful traveler to get out and explore get out there, see what this big planet has to offer, and that is part of her mission, and we're going to find out so much more about what she's doing. Um, So thank you, Regina, for being on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. Gosh, what a great introduction. (laughs) (laughs) I'm happy I'm one of the superheroes. (laughs) You are. You are definitely a superhero. I mean, what it takes to just uh, get out there and explore, I think, for some people is is beyond human. So um, let's first, I know that you have, um, you have quite a history of traveling, but um, let's go back. Let's go back to, um, you know, college, which is when you first had your, your first really big adventure overseas. And then kind of take us through what, what progressed after that. Well, I went to college at Kansas State University and I went down there wanting to be an architect and I decided to switch to business for one main reason. I wanted to study abroad. So I chose Australia, and I went down there. It was supposed to be for a semester, and I'm pretty sure about a month in, I called my parents. I'm like, hey, Mom, Dad, I'm not coming home. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I ended up staying for an entire year, and during that time, I was able to backpack through Australia and New Zealand, uh, Southeast Asia, and I was kind of working a you know, variety of jobs to be able to fund my trips. And when I came home after that year, you know, graduation wasn't on my mind. I'm like, I just want to get back on the road and <laughs> get me out there again. Of course. <laughs> so I, um, I, I did graduate, luckily, and um, I bought a one-way ticket to Europe. And now, seven years later, I'm still traveling, working, living, volunteering overseas. Okay, so I mean, we we have all heard about uh, people that you know they save all their money, they go on a back backpack adventure through Europe, and um, they come home and they resume what we all know to be is just life. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so those, those J word, exa- job, a job, <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's like I'm sure you you could go back and talk to all those and take a poll, and they'd be like man, I wish I could, but really what are the possibilities of, of doing that again? That was a one-time thing. Um, so what was it the kind of in your mind that you're like, this cannot not be part of my life? So therefore, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, that jobs weren't going to be part of my life? or Your life I'm, is I'm going to be that. exploring. Oh, gosh, yeah. I, you know, again, it was that first trip, that totally set the pace and I knew I would do everything in my power to continue traveling and you know people like you are asking or mentioning how do you afford it and okay so you save all your money how do you actually make this happen Mm -hmm. but it's all relative I mean I live within my means I I mean let's be honest I don't have a family and that's very expensive and I work seasonal jobs everywhere that I can overseas so I'm not tied into something at home where I you know maybe have seven days or uh, two weeks vacation for the entire year, I move from job to job and in between I just travel. And I know it sounds like, you know, so lofty and, oh, this free spirit, no, she's so lucky, but it has nothing to do with luck. It's putting yourself out there, it's taking a risk, and it's just being confident in your abilities to know that you will land on your feet. Okay, that right there, that's, um, you know, you, I mean, obviously it's not like you just 
don't have the same fears we all have. So maybe let our listeners in on notes, some of your process of like, okay, I'm letting go of this job and there will be something for me. <laughs> My process. Well, <laughs> we don't think very much. I guess that's the process. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's, um, it's kind of like your, your survival instinct kicks in mm-hmm. and you know that when you're down to your last couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is that you need to start thinking ahead and that's when you start researching okay where do I want to go next what kind of jobs are out there and even if there's not a job working at for instance a hostel at a backpacker is doing reception or cleaning beds where you're getting free room and board and you're not necessarily making money for your pocket but it buys you time to figure out I guess where you want to work next and, and it is pretty incredible. And I'll be honest here, a lot of my jobs haven't been legit, <laughs> but there is under-the-table work all over the place. And, again, if you're charismatic and you come in there like, this is who I am, this is what I'm capable of, people latch on to that. And I think that women, and, and well, men for that matter, we forget. We, we forget what we're capable of. And I, by kind of just putting yourself out there, and, again, that instinct or that survival has to kick in, you surprise yourself. You mm-hmm. surprise yourself just how able you are. I, I mean, I, you're also establishing relationships that, I mean, you could probably go anywhere in the world and feel like you have a support of some kind. At, at this stage, yes. And if I don't know somebody there, I've met somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who's there. <laughs> but, and, and, and you know, that's like anything in life, whatever your, your passion or your career, that's going to happen. And I guess that's just how it's worked out for me. Love it. Now, you started a website called Backpackers Wanted. So tell us what that is and um, kind of your vision for that. Well, Backpackers Wanted is kind of a, what began as a testament to my 10 years on the road. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of blogs, travel tips, ways to save money. And in, I guess, the past year or two years, it's really grown into something more. I want to be an outlet for people. I want them to connect with me, ask me questions. How did you do this? How did you do that? What did you think of this country? Um, you know, where do you think I should work? I want to be an open line of communication for people. And the website itself is not, you know, some travel site where I'm going to book a ticket for you or, I don't know, get you a hostel bed. It's just a place that you can plug into and, I guess, find encouragement and inspiration to pursue your own adventures. Love it. Now, um, let's talk about the competition, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom Next Wild Guide Competition. That is a <laughs> <laughs> I get really fired up when I talk about it. Okay, good, good. Tell us all about that. How did that happen? How did that land in, in, in your, your life? Well, Shantay, are you familiar with Wild Kingdom? Oh, you who, I mean, I'm thinking of being just a little kid and hearing the sound, like the opening theme song, and just knowing exactly what my dad was watching in, <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you know, because I, I found that there's kind of a Gen X, Gen Y divide. Uh-huh. And if you're on the cusp, like, you know, probably, I don't know, 30 and under, you don't know what the Wild Kingdom was because it stopped airing at that point. Oh. And so I, I have to relate it for, for younger people as well, like a crocodile hunter or Animal Planet. But what these younger people don't realize is An- or Wild Kingdom was the predecessor for all of these other wildlife shows. It really pioneered wildlife television. And as you remember, I mean, that was the grandest show. That was synonymous with Sunday night television. Uh-huh. I remember telling my parents that I was applying for this position, and they absolutely hit the roof. They were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe our daughter has this chance. <laughs> and seeing their enthusiasm and researching it further, I realized just how, how big of a step this would be for me, of course, because this is already my passion, but for viewers. You know, we need to bring back this classic favorite and just kind of, moderni- I guess, modernize it for today's viewer. I, I love that. Um, and I agree. I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't even realize that it went off the air. I just assume <laughs> you know, that, that that will remain around, you know, until I have grandchildren. <laughs> well, here's the hope. <laughs> wild Kingdom. So they have um, this competition. Tell us what the competition's like and is it... I mean, is it similar to other competitions we see, like Amazing Race, where they add in the drama? I mean, what what, what is this one in particular? Well, I'm so happy you asked. Uh, what I'll do, I'll quickly backpedal to get to this point in the competition, because they're, they're looking for their next host, mm-hmm. what they call a wild guide. Awesome. And I had to submit a video. It was just a two-minute video 
of me, I guess, showing my passion for animals and for nature. And Mutual of Omaha said, you don't need to be a wildlife expert. They just want somebody who's eager and willing to learn alongside viewers. So I submitted my video, and I got into the top 12. And this is a nationwide search. And from there, we began an online vote. And, you know, so I mobilized friends and family to vote, to share the video. Um, I blew up my social media. And a couple weeks later, I was uh, determined to be in the top three, which is where I'm at now. And this is where everything gets exciting because... <laughs> Mutual, Mutual of Omaha doesn't, you know, I think the show in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it worked for the time because it was the first um, series of that nature, but it's not going to work today necessarily. It does need to have, as you just mentioned, a bit of drama, a bit of risk. There has to be something there that pulls today's viewers in, mm -hmm. and that's why they're looking for a new guide. I mean, if they wanted a zoologist, they would have gone to the local zoo and got a zoologist kind of like, you know, Marlon Perkins was a zoologist. But they really want somebody who just can interact with the viewer, engage them, I guess be relatable, and kind of take them on journeys with, with the host, you know, make them feel a part of something. And that's what really excites me because I've, I've loved animals and nature ever since I began traveling, but I've never been able to, I guess, incorporate it into anything further than, you know, petitions and, and conservation acts while I travel. And this would be huge to share that passion with the nation. Okay, so how do we f we find out ways to support you and get you to, to you know, make sure that one, Wild Kingdom stays on the air <laughs> and that you become <laughs> that face and voice of, of what it is? Well, the voting process is already done. That ended a couple weeks ago. Okay. So now I have to audition, and I audition next week, and um, it's me and the other two people. But the best way that people can support me is to go to the Wild Kingdom website. It's wildkingdom.com, and you're going to see three little photos, and I'm the one in a, in a cowboy hat. And just go, go there, watch the videos. I mean, of course, I'd love you to watch my video, but watch the other contestants also. And let us know what you think. Uh, let us know what you want to see in a series, because that's what this is all about. We want to, I guess, create something for what the viewer wants. So just get involved, and, and beyond that, gosh, get involved in your community with conservation efforts. Uh, go to your local zoo and see if you can volunteer, or maybe there's a paid internship. Use your social media platform to blast out your, your favorite animal or a petition that's close to your heart. You know, this whole thing is just about reminding viewers, reminding young people that humans, animals, environments, we're all interconnected. And if we neglect one of those, we neglect them all. So I just really want to fire people up. I want to bring back the enthusiasm and the legacy of Wild Kingdom to today. Love it. Now, um, clearly this is the, the next thing on um, your your big bucket list. Um, what else is your vision for you know moving forward, whether the trips that you have planned, backpackers wanted, um, what's the 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 Six month because I'm not going to even give you a five year vision because <laughs> <laughs> you know you know the answer. <laughs> yeah, we already talked about that. It's like the part you just you jump and the net will appear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs they get into something for money, mm -hmm. and, and let's be honest, money makes the world go round. But when I created Backpackers Wanted, it was just for the good of other travelers mm -hmm. or other wishful travelers, and because of that, I've had people now approaching me. Um, asking me to write for them, asking me to, uh, you know, do a funny video for their website, asking me to be a remote broadcaster in countries. So I guess what I'm finding is I don't have to seek something. I feel like things are coming to me because I started something for the good of a cause. And I know that sounds really cheesy, and I realize that doesn't work with a lot of other people's projects, but with mine, it absolutely has. And I'm very fortunate, and I'm very thankful, and I guess moving forward, if, if Wild Kingdom doesn't work out and I don't become the host, I'll continue writing, you know, <laughs> just teaching people about the world and encouraging them to get out there and see it for themselves. I love that. Um, you know, and I, I, that really does, that speaks to me. Um, I was just, just in an interview with um, a, a wonderful lady, her name's Tiffany Peterson, and she teaches people on the art of selling and this whole idea that we're always selling something. Um, but she talks about, you know, one, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. 
Otherwise, you'll never be able to sell it. And sell it is just a synonym for, you know, communicate about it and just share it. Um, and the prophet usually will will make itself known and in ways that you would never have thought to put in place. And it sounds like you're just this like living example of exactly that. Just follow the passion. The rest of it will, will show up as it, as it should. Love that. Well, and, and that's another thing for, for listeners uh, to this podcast. I encourage you to sit down today and create what I call my, my network or my web mm-hmm. and write every person in your life that has and maybe it helped you with a, a job or maybe, I don't know, offered you a, some money when you were feeling down. Whatever it is, just people that have inspired you and, and helped you throughout your life. And then from them, put a little, you know, line to the next person who then you met because of it. Mm-hmm. And then the next person because of that. And you create this, this gorgeous web of all these people in your life that brought you to the point you're at today. And I've done that, you know, I feel like I do it every year. And I'll write thank you cards to these people, just letting them know what their influence in my life did. And it's kind of like that whole pay it forward, you know, you just mm-hmm. want to make people feel better. But I just, I've received some of those letters. And it's so heartwarming to think that of the little thing you did really set this person in a positive direction. So I encourage listeners today, sit down, create your web, and pull out a couple thank you cards. Get into it. <laughs> And I think it also lets you know that, you know, you're never alone. And, you know, I in this day and age of technology, uh, where we do everything via, you know, phone call or just internet where you don't even have to, like, hear a voice, um, I'm sure we all feel those moments of, of loneliness without even realizing it. So I think that's a wonderful practice to just remind yourself. You have these connections. You, you know, nurture them a little bit and, you know you'll always feel like you're kind of surrounded by family. Um, Now, let's, you know, before we wrap anything, maybe give your top two traveling tips, uh, you know, your little secret, little ninja um, (laughs) secrets that that people just should know that would change their lives as they were traveling. Oh, wow. That's a a tall order. I know. I know. It doesn't have to be top secret, I guess. You could, you know, if you want to keep those. (laughs) Well, the number one, and I've already kind of discussed this, but it's trust your instincts and trust yourself. Mm -hmm. I called them before my spider senses, and when you're traveling, it's kind of that funny feeling you get in your gut when when something just isn't right. You need to listen to that. Or on the other side, when something positive happens, open yourself up to that person. Don't be so closed off thinking, oh, I'm in a foreign country. I shouldn't talk to people. They could hurt me. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? There is like... A million to one people out there that would love to do something good for you compared to that one who maybe wants to do something bad. So trust yourself, trust your instincts, and listen to your spider senses. They're there for a reason. Um, and, and gosh, I would say my other one, oof, probably don't go on a trip with expectations. I hate agendas. I hate itineraries. <laughs> I don't understand them. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just think you are out there traveling to experience a country. And if you p- just pigeonhole yourself into, okay, for 12 hours a day, I have a schedule. I have something I have to do. You're not actually enjoying the moment as much as you can because you're constantly thinking about the next. Mm-hmm. When you just show up, I don't care. Even if you get seven days and that's all you have for the whole year and you want to go see all of Europe, don't focus on a place really savor that place enjoy that place and and relish it so i don't know no no agenda no itinerary that's my other piece of advice okay those are awesome and um that does get me one more thing um so when it comes to being a woman those are two things we do really well we have our spider senses our intuition and we seem really good at creating expectations so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Talk sure to me about, um, one, uh, being a woman kind of in this big, big, you know, adventure called life. And that part of that is finding your passion, you know, zeroing in on that. Sorry, how, how to do that? Yes. What, whatever you advice you would have to, you know, our listeners about that specifically. Okay. Uh, you know, probably look at where you're at today what you enjoy, the things that have made you who you are, the things you want to be tomorrow. 
I, I'm a list person, even though it probably doesn't seem that way. And just create a list of the things that you want for yourself today, for tomorrow, and kind of create maybe two or three different avenues, two or three things that you think would make you happy, um, mm-hmm. kind of align your head and your heart. Because a lot of women, we have one or the other. You know, you maybe get a career and your head says, oh, this is awesome, you're in corporate America, go, 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 but your heart isn't in it at all. Mm-hmm. So it's just sitting down, kind of figuring out what's important to you, align your head and your heart, create two or three avenues you want to pursue, and then start pursuing. Love it. I think that's exactly right. The alignment of head and heart, I think that's that's dead on. Um, now, and if, again, females, we've got that emotional thing going for us, so. <laughs> We're really <laughs> good at that. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes sense. Um, now, if people would like to learn more about you, there is Backpackers Wanted. Uh, dot com and that's where they can also tie into your social media channels where they can find out um, you know if they're not hitting the wild kingdom website then they can they can find out where you're at in the world um, is there any other way that they can reach out to you no just uh, www.backpackerswanted.com there's going to be a link to my email there's also links to all my social media and just write me if you have a question or you have a concern don't even think twice. I, I love that. That's what I live for. So just write me or, you know, check out my blog, share stuff. If it, if it inspired you, and maybe you have a friend that could find inspiration in that, that blog or that travel tip, share it. You know, knowledge is power. So let's just transfer it. Get it out there. Awesome. Well, um, to our listeners, we will make sure to have all of Regina's um, links on our website so that you can follow her um, I mean, through through each of these adventures and just interact and, and gain some, some really awesome insights and hopefully inspire you to, you know, pick up a backpack and hit the world and have an adventure. Um, Regina, thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. It's been so fun to talk to you. Oh, thank you. Right back at you and to all the listeners. Thanks for, for tuning in and, and just keep on pushing, ladies. Keep pressing on. <laughs> to our audience thank you for listening now get out there build something beautiful until next time take care